Welcome to the Carnivore Cast, a podcast focused on the carnivore diet and lifestyle, with practical advice from successful carnivores, citizen scientists, and top researchers. I'm your host, Scott Meslinski, and I'm here to speak with experts and experienced carnivores to get answers to your biggest and meatiest questions while helping you live your best life as a carnivore. This episode is brought to you by LMNT Electrolytes. This month, we're switching it up with an exclusive offer that's only for VIP LMNT partners, including Carnivore Cast listeners. You can now receive this free sample pack along with any regular purchase when you use my custom link, which is provided in the show notes or my Instagram link in bio. That's drinklmnt.com forward slash Carnivore Cast, all one word. And as I said, I'll include the link in the show notes. LMNT electrolytes are convenient, evidence-based, and delicious. And get yours today to help support the show. Thank you. David Fishchuk at David Fishchuk on Instagram is a mindset and fitness coach, family man, and internet entrepreneur. David struggled with eating lots of plants and processed foods before starting a new way of life in health and fitness and going into keto, carnivore, and animal-based diets. He helps others um, to build a mentally tough mindset and get fit with nutrition and fitness. Welcome to the show, David. Appreciate, appreciate you, Scott. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So I, I'd love to just start with hearing your story. You know, how did you kind of get to the place of, um, you know, examining your own diet and then uh, helping others do the same? Yeah, I'll give you a brief rundown uh, based on just my upbringing and how it all kind of leads yeah. to where I'm at today. The long uh, version works too. <laughs> long version works too. Fantastic. So currently where I'm at now, um, as you said, I've gone through this crazy journey of dieting. I didn't have that growing up. Most of us don't even understand what is good and what is bad as far as food. We think Kellogg's breakfast cereals and Pop-Tarts, all that is, is all good and dandy, right? It's basically how I grew up. I'm a first generation Ukrainian. Um, my family and a lot of my cousins all came to America in the 90s, like early 90s. Uh, my brother was actually born in Ukraine. A lot of my cousins were, but I actually ended up being born here in America within a year of us coming. So I don't even, I've never been there. Don't think I'd ever go there at this point. It's all, all the crazy stuff. So I'm here and um, it's a blessing because there's so much around us to be thankful for. We actually, um, actually in a single parent family household, like grew up just a single mom with a house of me, my brother and grandparents all stuffed into a small low income apartment. Uh, grew up on food stamps, financial aid, Basically, whatever we would get, we would take. You know, I'd get hand-me-downs from family. And my brother was actually severely overweight up until he was a bit older. He actually passed away a few years ago. And he credits, and he actually was the one who got me on doing a keto diet and then a carnivore diet. So he brought me down that pathway because he struggled his entire life. You know, how most people in America and around the world, even at this point, we all just take what, whatever's around us, right? School lunches. I would get free lunches, so you'd basically get slop growing up, right? So I was stuck eating the slop of the food. You know, we'd always be eating out of cans. I'd imagine, I remembered myself walking around our old neighborhood, like with bags of top ramen. I just shake it up with the, with, you know, with the seasoning and eat it like that. And it was just that's how most that's how I grew up, and um, definitely not easy, right? Always on that financial aid, had that mindset of just. For me anyways, I always thought that I would have a fantastic life when I grew up, didn't know how to get there. I always had a chip on my shoulder not having a parent around me, except for my mom. And she worked the long, long nights. My grandparents effectively raised us with my mom. And I found it as actually a blessing because uh, I didn't have a dad that was kind of crazy and was always, you know, there to terrorize me. He was actually a um, an abusive guy. And so my mom actually... Uh, you know, they divorced after I was born, which for me was fantastic. I didn't have that bad influence. And my mom actually always told me, so I grew up Christian. And I'm still currently Christian. And she always told me, you may not have a father on earth that loves you, but you have a heavenly father above that's always watching over you. So to me, I'd always wanted a family, a whole family unit. I always wanted to have that love, loving father around me. Instead, I had, you know, great cousins and uncles and people around me. I looked to as father figures so that someday I'll be able to be a father of my own and love my family with as much passion as possible. Never go down that same exact pathway. And by doing so, I need to become like the best person that I could be. 
So as I was growing up, I, um, I did running star. I did all of these, I grabbed every opportunity that I could and running star. I don't know if they still have it today. Um, about to be 29 years old. And this was around 2010, 2012. I left high school two years early to actually get a degree where you'd combine high school and college together in one. And you would, I basically left after my uh, sophomore year of high school and then went to college. So I was with all the older people and I didn't really care about popularity, dances, school stuff. I just wanted to get my, get a degree, get a job, find a wife, get married and just live my life. I had no other aspirations. That was literally it. I wanted to prove people wrong and then get a job. And around 2014 is when I found, uh, when I didn't find my wife. My mom actually found her for me, but um, I met her and my whole life kind of changed. So she's also similar situation, divorced parents. Um, they came to Ukraine when she was younger. So she was actually from Ukraine. And we actually were, um, I, I had just got my job with my tech degree in downtown Seattle because I'm from the Northwest. And I thought that was like it for me. I was like, I found my, my passion in life. And I was the, that hard worker that for me, around 17 years old is actually where um, everything kind of almost switched for me. I grew up very skinny fat because of all the top ramen and all that. I'd play Call of Duty all the time. And I would um, sit there, eat like popcorn and bacon. And I didn't, you know, just that nerdy kid who didn't do anything right, you know, just all that. And um, I did this workout program that one of my cousins challenged me to called P90X. Most people I feel like I've heard of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was one of the only people in my family group and my cousins that actually did it fully through. Once that happened, the bug kicked. Like I got rid of my skinny fat look and I became like, it was like a calisthenic workout. So you're not going to get very buff or anything from it. But I finally had like somewhat of a six pack and it got me down this journey of understanding and, and eating a little bit better. I didn't know what I was doing with eating. I kind of just ate salmon and salad and basic stuff. It was just what you would normally hear, right? White rice, salmon, basic stuff. So that's where I started my journey. But once me and my wife um, got married, she actually introduced me to a guy who um, at the time I was trying to figure out, like, hey, are we going to be a, a, a couple that is just going through the motions? We both work nine to five. We have no lives. Or we're about to get married. Maybe I should pursue something because we have an opportunity. My mom gave us an option. She said, well, you're very young. We got married and I was 21 and she was 18. So super young. Yeah, and wow. she's like, hey, I can give you my master bedroom and you can live here. You can try to figure out like what you want to do. Let, let my wife, Yana, like graduate from college and then we can both get a job. Well, around that exact time when my mom took that burden off us, because we could have just gotten some cheap apartment and just did our thing. But instead, um, I actually found my wife had a really good friend and her husband had a yellow Lamborghini and lived in downtown. And I was like blown away. I, my mind changed from like, that's not possible. I can't grasp that to, yo, I need to meet who this guy is and figure out like how I can get, save money for myself or like become free like that. And it was weird because I had never even saw that as something that I could attain, but I had actually been approached a few months earlier that started this whole theory in my head by these like network marketers. I don't know if you're familiar with network marketing and like um, these guys that would basically be sitting around at Starbucks and pitching to you like a small business idea where if you um, join with them, they have these products, like a product series. A huge one, if anyone looks this up, is called Amway. And basically, you would, it would be a pyramid scheme, effectively. Yeah. You <laughs> know what a pyramid scheme is. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so basically, you would get people below you who would also sell other people below you to join in this big business where you would sell products and have other people do the same thing. It works very well if you can convince hundreds below you because you get commissions up, up the ladder, right? So the higher you up are on there, the better. I barely started it because I was like, there's no way I can even make a dollar at this. But it unlocked my brain because when I first got my job out of my college degree, I got to the bus stop to go to downtown. And I was like, wow, I feel like I'm part of like everybody. You know, I'm part of the, uh, the ship, part of the crew. I'm going to go on this bus. We're all going to go down there. In my head, I always see images of guys in New York on a train. And to me, I thought that was life. And so I got on the bus. And I was so excited. Within a few months of learning about entrepreneurship, 
I legitimately sat in the bus and I was like, wow, this is really depressing. I can't do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> so that unlocked it. And then I met my, uh, my wife introduced me to that couple, the guy with the yellow Lamborghini. And I asked him something. I said, what do you do for work? And he says, I do internet marketing. And I was like, okay, cool. Do you have a website or anything? I can look it up. He gives me a random like tidbit of a forum from back in the day that doesn't exist anymore. And so I signed up and my mind was like blown. I, um, I told my wife, I'm like, babe, this is, this has got to be it. Like I need to do this because I can also have yellow Lamborghini. I can also do all this stuff. I just need the time and the sacrifice. Cause if we don't do it now, whenever will we get the opportunity? So my wife graciously was like, you know, you got swallowed the deep pride inside and get married and then live with my parents and crazy stuff, right? Like no one wants to do that. Um, and so we sacrificed for a year and a half of being at my mom's place while, while I test all these business ideas and, and all of that. And then all that entire time, I would work 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., not including travel time to get to and from downtown Seattle. I lived about an hour away from there. And then... From that time, I'd always go to the gym. It's always been a consistent thing in my life, always like five, four or five days at the gym. And then I would work from 8 p.m. until 1 to 2 a.m. And I'd repeat that, wake up at 4 a.m. I did that for over a year straight. Crazy dedication. And I would always be so exhausted. Well, basically, once I had actually started my e-commerce business at the time, I was like, awesome. I had visualized a lot of stuff that I wanted in life. And I ended up, Moving to downtown, the same place with this little a tower away from where my Lamborghini friend lived, I bought myself an Audi R8, and I was like, wow, like, I finally made it in life, which is where all my problems begin, because the young man always uh, gets too excited, and he spends his money, and then problems occur, right? Um, but that's kind of where I started and where I went, kind of my, my journey. But in between there, once I went downtown is where all the problems started for me, especially with my health. Because once you go close to, you know, where all the restaurants are and you feel like, why do I even care about my health now? I'm still working out at the gym. You know, that's, that's all that matters these days, right? Just go to the gym, diet doesn't matter as long as you, uh, you go to the gym, you exercise, do a lot of cardio. You know, that's the, the idea people tell you or try and eat clean. So I did the complete opposite approach. I would go on a walk with my dog. I'd have these Ferrero Rocher candies and I would just like chuck them back eating like crazy. And then I didn't really, for some odd reason in my head, I couldn't put two and two together as to why I was having like issues with breathing as to why I was putting on a bunch of weight. And I started blaming like everything left, right, and center for, for like a couple of years between around 2017 and 2019 of like, how on earth did I look like I was shredded around 2021. I looked at our honeymoon pictures and I was like, I looked great. And then here I am like 24, 25 years old and like arguably the worst shape of my life. I was like, I feel like I'm 16 again, skinny fat, you know, like I looked at pictures and videos of me working out at the gym and I was like, I can take the whole stack of weights, but I looked at myself and it was just a little, little chubby guy. And it made me very self-conscious because I had multiple people would comment, see on a picture of me, like, bro, what happened to you? You know, that's one of those things where it's like, you don't, you tell a guy that he looks at himself and he's like, I thought I, I thought I looked good, but then internally it kind of kills you because you feel like you're looking good. You feel like it, but I, I couldn't figure out what the missing link was. So I tried everything. I tried Googling macros. I tried Googling um, ways to get rid of bloat. And this is a hilarious one because I was Google, you know, you Google something, you always have a weird answer, right? So I Googled how to get rid of belly bloat because I thought my issue was a random trick that I wasn't doing right because I was eating... Um, a lot of salads with, with balsamic vinegar and like some salmon and grilled chicken and like tons of um, wild rice. I wouldn't track anything. In the morning, I'd have like a turkey bacon with egg whites and like a bunch of syrup on it and like, like granola bowls. I grabbed whatever Costco said looked healthy. And I was like, great, I'm going to eat that. And then I got crazy pimples all over my body and I, I was kind of in desperation, like, what on earth do I do? And at the time, I told you my brother was pretty overweight. He'd go through spells, because I've been relatively, like, skinny fat if ever I lose my, my body composure, but he was, like, actually pretty overweight. And um, he started doing a keto diet in, like, 2018, and he just, like, trimmed down, like, crazy. 
And in my head, I was like, okay, I, I, I'm going to swallow my pride because clearly I can't figure out what's going on with me. The story of Googling was they was told that drinking out of a straw will cause you to bloat because the bubbles and the air pockets from the straw would go into your stomach and cause bloating. For six months, I did not drink out of a straw. Didn't do anything, by the way. That's a new one. I haven't heard of that. <laughs> Google anything and you'll find out the weirdest, weirdest stuff. <laughs> but um, so the next part of the story goes in 2019, I was like, screw this. I started looking up um, guys on YouTube about the keto diet. There's uh, this guy, Thomas DeLauer. Um, there's this channel called Flave City with Bobby. Like a lot of these guys that did like a keto diet. And I started expanding my mind and I was like, whoa, everything I thought I knew before was completely false. And so I'll, I downloaded an app called like Carb Manager and I was like putting my stats and it told me, hey, eat this amount of fat, carbs and protein. And of course, you know how keto goes, it's very low in like net carbs. So I, I was like, you know what, let's do it. My brother was going to help me out. And then once I cleaned up the diet, I went through the whole keto flu stage and um, I was still eating salads because I didn't know any better. Because when you do keto, all they tell you is just watch your net carbs and then eat like greasy food, basically. <laughs> um, which was, I mean, I loved it. I love bacon. I love whole eggs. You know, all of that was just amazing. Because I, I was restricting myself to like these gross foods I didn't even like. You know, I was like, well, this sounds healthy. Like, who really likes wild rice? Not me. <laughs> so I, um, I actually went from like, I'm currently I'm six foot four. Obviously, I've been for a long time. And I'd always kind of hovered around like 215 to 220. And when I started keto, I lost about 10 pounds in a few months, being very, very strict with the keto diet. And I finally saw like an outline of my abs for the first time. But then what came with that though was um, and I'm sure you're very aware of when this happens, when you're when your microbiome changes a bunch. And then you realize your sensitivities to all of these foods that you previously have been ingesting are actually very detrimental to you. Like soy, dairy, could be dairy. Um, for me, it was like soy, um, processed oils, and a lot of like deep leafy greens like kale and spinach were really causing issues with my stomach. And when I cut them all out, I noticed that I was fine. And then I, I was taking a magnesium supplement I didn't realize one of the main ingredients was soy. And I, and I was like wondering, why is my stomach so like nasty bloated? And then I realized, looked at the back, my brother told me, hey, cut up every bit of soy that you can find. You'd be surprised where they would hide all of these crazy ingredients. Well, it turns out you, open, you look at the back of some of these supplements and you're like, why on earth is the pill made out of soy and all this crazy stuff, which screwed with, <laughs> with my body. So as soon as I cut it out, I, I started really understanding like what, what and how people are always stuck in a position where they can overwork themselves or they'll do like hours and hours of running on the treadmill and then they'll try and eat healthy, but they're, they're inundating themselves with all kinds of toxins that they don't really realize. So I did keto. And then of course you go down the rabbit hole of what most people do and how they fail a keto diet is they end up going crazy with keto treats and then they don't really track things as much. And then I was eating these like Reese's peanut butter cups that were keto. And I was like, hey, as long as, the, as long as it's got high fat, moderate protein and low carb, we're good. And then the weight started coming back inevitably, like most things do, right? If you don't keep things in check. And so I was like, you know what? I gotta go one step further. And then it started going crazy in my like Instagram where everyone was doing carnivore now. One of my friends was doing carnivore. Um, you probably know, you know, Kurt Yazichi. He's one of my good friends yep, from C Carnivore Kurt. Yes, kind of a I love that guy because it was it was crazy. We met because he uh, we're both in the internet marketing world too, and uh, it was because that's why I still do actively now, along with my coaching. And he was doing keto at the time, so he was one of the guys who affirmed to me keto was great. And then in a similar journey with me, when it came to starting to cut out all of the dark greens and, and all the crazy stuff, and then I saw him go and do carnivore, and then he was he was he was bringing me beef liver and like all this stuff, and I was like, well, this is crazy, <laughs> but. It worked because he was like in so fit, so in shape, you know, like he didn't have like any acne on his face. Like you can tell he was very, very healthy from when he was even doing keto, right? So I started going like crazy with the carnivore diet, which was fantastic. Like again, 
the benefits for me from doing carnivore was I noticed and realized that I had way more like sensitivities to greens and almost all of that stuff to the point where I cut it all out. And I was like, wow, I feel satiated all the time. I'm never really hungry as long as I have like, like ribeye steaks, higher fat ground beef. And then, um, what was, oh yeah. And a bunch of eggs. I would always feel satiated with, of course, my, like my, um, my Redmond's real salt, or like a good quality salt. I was always feeling good versus any other diet I did. I'd always feel like hungry 24 seven. Right. So that was my story from getting just to carnivore. But I feel like, and you can, you can tell me if you've experienced this too. It almost doesn't matter like how crazy your diet is, but if you overeat on anything, you will inevitably put on weight. Do you experience that too? I feel like it's not just me. Like if you have like like 20 ribeye steaks a day and you do that nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think to an extent, it, it depends a lot on your, on your activity levels, your lifestyle, your metabolism, where you're at in life. And also like, I don't think most people could eat 20 ribeye steaks a day, you know, like just practically like certain foods are going to satiate you more, but yeah, to an extent, like you can get fat doing a carnivore diet for sure. This episode is brought to you by Impossible Sleep. Longtime listeners of the podcast will know just how much I obsess about my sleep and trying to optimize it. Poor sleep can crush your metabolism and your insulin sensitivity, increase anxiety, decrease your focus and vigilance, and make it harder to stick to your diet. Impossible Sleep is a non-melatonin, science-backed sleep drink focused on helping you wind down, recover deeply, and improve key markers of your sleep. You can get 20% off your first subscription and a free sleep reset welcome kit with code carnivore 20 at impossible.co slash products slash sleep. It helps support the show and will help you relax into sleep and wake up recovered. Check it out at impossible.co and use code carnivore 20 to save. Yeah, to an extent, like you can get fat doing a carnivore diet for sure. And that's actually what happened to me. I don't know if you can see it on this, um, on the podcast, but I have a picture I actually found when I was doing, like, I was loosely doing carnivore, but I wasn't, I was um, following most of the carnivore rules, minus just, like, eating a ton of it. Because a lot of the guys you would hear in the space would always tell you, um, eat till you're full, right? But for me, full, at my height and all that, I was, I'm always been an issue for me was eating a lot of food. So, like, this is me, and I hopefully that, is that pick it up? Yeah, yeah. Look at that big old belly. Yeah, I that's, mean, I wouldn't say you're like fat, but yeah, you have some body fat for sure. Yeah, comparatively to like where I, where I thought I was. And this is actually me in Florida about a... Wow, yeah. Yeah. It's a huge transformation. It is, it is. Um, and then I realized to me, it's like, just like you said, you can almost overeat on anything. For me, my biggest issue is I always feel hungry. Always, you know? And... That to me is also when I started, all of the carnivore guys started going, well, let's go the animal-based route. We'll start including honey and fruit. And so me, just like a lot of people online, will start seeing a lot of these guys, you know, like Paul, Dr. Paul Saladino, and they'll start including fruits and they're like, oh, I feel great. And I was like, well, maybe I should do that too, because I love fruit and I want to see if it affects me. Well, ding, 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 it doesn't affect me because it makes sense, right? Fruit is the part of the plant that wants you to eat it. So it makes sense. I started including fruit and honey and I felt fantastic. But the problem for me again happened where I don't, I wasn't tracking anything since like 2019 into 2020. And just like with carnivore and keto, once you stop actually focusing on like eating until you're full, not eating until you're gluttonous, all, a lot of it works, right? So I ended up gaining a, a, a good bit of weight again, doing a very... I, I actually started tracking what I was eating and it turned out I was eating like 4,500 calories a day, not even realizing it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that's too many calories, but for me at the time, I wasn't doing enough work and I had slowed down my metabolism or it adapted to a point where it actually was detrimental to me. So I also, and this was last year, actually in like, like May, June, I started doing, um, I don't know if you're familiar with 75 hard. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. There's so different I, versions of it. There's like a carnivore 75 hard. There's a million different things. Oh, I do the original one, which 
you can spin it with say like doing it um a way where you're a carnivore because i actually did it the first time as a carnivore uh, okay. so my diet was a carnivore diet but i followed all the other rules right work out twice a day drink a gallon of water a day um all of those exact same rules and i i lost like a ton of weight because i was running um for my cardio and then i was you know doing a normal weightlifting session six days a week um with multiple cardio so wow yeah but that is what actually like like it it, it did something crazy to my mind because that's where my self-discipline really like took off because a lot of the, like throughout my years of being even an entrepreneur and like running my internet marketing business and all this you have to be self-disciplined to be self-employed, right? But there's also like a lazy self-discipline where you get just enough work to kind of get the day through. You're not really pushing the needle forward. You're kind of just like moving through life, right? And um, doing 75 hard the first couple of weeks, it's easy. Anybody can do a challenge for a couple of weeks, right? But it's usually when it gets really cold at night and you're having to run on an, do another run or do another work out when you're like, man, I really don't want to, it's raining. But you have to learn that there's two voices in your head. You have a weak voice, then you have a boss voice. So the weak one is always seeking comfort. It's always the one that says, well, you can have that Twinkie. Don't worry about it. You can just watch some Netflix tonight. It's raining. Don't even worry about doing the walk. Who cares if you fail? Just tick the box and keep going and tell everyone that you did it because no one's really going to know, right? Like, let's be honest, like these types of challenges and programs are not, um, like no one's going to know except for you. You're battling with yourself. It's why you do stuff like that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's all about self accountability. Exactly. And it's like, if you really want to change, you have to, you have to actually put in the work. It's how people typically will say, go towards a carnivore diet. They realize that, Hey, I have so many bodily issues. I'm either overweight or I have like, I have nonstop breakouts or I have a like fatty liver or something's going on. I have diabetes and it's, I need change. And so like, until you actually realize that you need it, then something like 75 hard, if you're searching for progression and like radical change, it transformed my life. And the beauty of it, it's literally a free program. You just Google it and it'll tell you what to do, right? Yeah. And that's the, that's the beauty of it because you're accountable. That's all you. And so once I went through that first like run i was like man i felt super good like my mind was just like i, I had a hard time finding excuses and literally anything so i started like finding that anything of that i would say that would be a comfort seeking thing like grab the snack snooze on the alarm it would actually irritate me because my mind was tuned into this voice that would be like an advocate for you like the boss voice it's like do the hard thing because then when you actually push through it you feel better when you do a hard workout and you take a workout to failure, once you get done with the workout, you're like, man, I feel so much better. I crushed that way. I move forward in life. I see progress versus most of the people that we see at the gym, for example, or we see in our lives, they either at one point look good, then they fell off or the same guys at the gym have not changed since like five years ago, right? Because we, we lack self-discipline. We lack our own accountability. We don't want to move things forward. We just want to stay where we are and in comfort. So that's kind of why I kept testing all these different diets, right? I went from the carnivore to animal based. And then I was like, this works because I understood very, very clearly. I needed to know not that animal based and carnivore is like the right way for, I believe, humans to eat, but there's got to be some kind of science as to like how many of the carbs should I have? How much of the fat should I have? How much protein is adequate for my body? but follow the same ancestral protocols. So I actually hired a mentor that gave me like an outline of like, hey, I'm 218 pounds, which I was at the time. And here's a breakdown of carbs, fats, and proteins. And he got me in a 2000 calorie macro setup. And he's like, just follow this. You can eat what you want to fill it, but I suggest you eat leafy greens and whatever. I was like, no, thank you. I will do an ancestral way of attacking it. Now, the only thing I do that I wouldn't, that some animal based or carnivore guys are okay with is say like white rice and like sweet potatoes, but I don't even touch like anything else really outside of like fruit, honey, um, eggs. And I get like really good quality, like pasture raised, sowing corn free eggs. Like I'm very, very like careful with what I, what I select. Um, so even if I do white rice, I mean, I soak it, I rinse it, 
I, I let it soak overnight. And then sweet potatoes, like I'm very careful with how it's cooked. I'm not using cruddy oils, like everything as close as I can to say maximize performance. But again, everything is for me is focused solely around that. It's I eat grass fed, grass finished ground beef as my main protein source. Then I fill it with um, like with the whole eggs, white rice if I need to, but a lot of just like berries um, and even like a little bit of orange juice to stimulate some extra like growth. But everything I do is surrounded there and I actually transform my body. You saw the picture of me and I've learned with myself how I was able to finally find the formula that works. Animal based as a structure and then based on your body type, how to fluctuate with the carbs and fats and proteins to effectively transform a body, but do it in a very healthy way where you're being nourished properly. Because anyone can tell you, get 150 grams of protein in a day for someone who's smaller and you do, you do what, vegan protein powder and it's just, it doesn't assimilate right. You know, you end up walking around with a bloated gut, you know, you, you hit the same numbers effectively with your diet, but if the quality isn't good, you can't expect proper results and proper like activity. So that's kind of my, my nutshell of, of my dieting history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. And, um, thank you for sharing all that, David. It's, it's crazy where you've come from and your upbringing. Um, and I, I can't imagine, um, starting out like that. It, it must've been very difficult, but I can tell you're a very resilient and driven person. And, and I really admire that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's funny because I, I always say I use the chip on my shoulder from being told by, I mean, even snark, snarky comments, even like some aunts and uncles about like, we wouldn't really be able to amount to anything. Because I mean, the statistics of like a single single mom raising boys is very, very high likelihood they're either going to be in jail, amount to nothing, or not go anywhere in life. So I was like, that won't be us. Like me and my brother were like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So he got his degree first. I followed suit. And then, you know, he just went down the corporate path and and I went down a path for me that opened up and I was like I can be so much more because I got really upset when I would be made fun of for like wearing hand-me-downs and like it really irked me you know and like I use it now as like a big passion and that's like my driving force is not to like shove it in someone's face that like look what I did it's more of like I know you did this to me and you made fun of me, but look where I'm at now and how I can help others, you and everyone else succeed. That's where I view it now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. And can you talk a little bit more about that, David? Like, how do you, how do you help people now, both on the um, traditional like health and fitness side, as well as mindset? Yeah. So for me, I find just like when I initially got into the entrepreneur world or got into my health journey, all of it stems from, you, you can't force anybody to change, right? You and I both know, right? An animal-based and carnivore way of eating is optimal for a human being. You can't just run up to a vegan, stop them in the face with a ribeye steak. You know what I mean? Like you have to actually provide the value, show the way that you live in your life. You have to eat the way you do, be the way you are, show it to people. And really it's like, you have to embody that. And so for me, it's like, Hey, I have to show everybody. Cause I went like dark on social media for years. I post like once every three months when I, when I first got my, like I got some money and I was all my pictures are pictures of my Audi R8 and like pictures of like expensive stuff. And I was, and I didn't do anything with it. You know, I didn't monetize it. I barely had any followers. I was kind of just like being dumb and young with my money. And I learned over time that's really stupid and God's humbled me many times. <laughs> and so I don't do any of that anymore. But for me, it's like, I've been through so much. I've seen so many failures in business and I've had to pick myself back up. I've seen so many failures with the way I've dieted and pick myself back up. And so the way that you can even help anybody is for one, showing them what's possible, but for two going, listen, if you are sick of being overweight, if you're sick of Maybe not, maybe if you're not overweight, but you just want to get the best shape of your life and understand how to get there. You need to actually set like a goal and a vision of a life that you want and look forward to what that is. Like for me, I initially had that push when I, when I wanted to move downtown because I had a friend that did it. And I was like, wow, I want to do that too. So I would sit there and just visualize like myself. 
like living in that downtown. I'd go on his Instagram and look at his pictures and be like, man, I want an exotic car. Like I want these things. So it drove me through vanity, but it drove me to, to do something with my life. You know, everyone's got a different driver. At the time it was vanity. It was like, I want the fancy stuff. It drove me enough to actually get off my lazy butt and do some work. Because most people would say, even today, like I'll take 25 bucks an hour and work at a tech job in Seattle. Like, yeah, why not? That's, that's money. My wife or girlfriend or whatever wants to also make another 20, 30 bucks an hour, more or less, whatever. We're living good. That's like 70, 80 K a year. We'll be fine. Well, once you realize like we as humans are capable of so much more in life, it really unlocks your potential. So you don't have to be stuck in your ways with your diet or your body, even if you believe a certain like, like way of eating, like being a vegetarian or being a vegan, or even just like eating a keto diet, you know, like we have to be open to learning and changing. And that all stems from like, Hey, realize that every, everyone's doing the same exact thing. They're rolling in the same boat. What do the people have in common that actually succeed? They step back, they set a goal. They realize that their past is behind them. They're not their past anymore. And as long as they have a vision of what they want, they can do anything of their dreams, whether it be finding the girl of their girl or boy of their dreams, whether it be starting a business, whether it be getting in the best shape of your life, it all stems from setting that goal and actually attacking it forward. And that discipline just gets built, of course, from always remembering daily what your goal is. Because when you can look at a motivational speaker all day long, but until you actually internalize it and set your daily steps forward to set your own goals, you need to be able to actually move forward with the discipline and the mindset that you don't need the motivation. You are the source of your motivation and you will actually be able to take that and move forward and help others do the same and help yourself in the process as well. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic message and something a lot of people need to hear and a lot of people need help with too um, because a lot of people are lost or complacent and it's really easy to settle into that. Yeah, and and it's almost like a good and bad thing of being doing 75 hard because I did like, I always liked having like ideas of like, wow, I'd love to like move to this place or go there. That's always great, fun and dandy. But once you do and realize that our growth is stimulated, just like in the gym from breaking your muscles down to building them back up, you have to be able to do that in your daily life. Like how do we ever expect to grow if we don't go through any hardships? hardships is where growth is had right ask a guy who's been who's been dumped by multiple girls like he's going to want to like be better himself and find a better girl it's not going to do the same for him they always have that picture what i saw growing up is like the guy in the gym who's working out because he just got dumped by his girlfriend so that pain caused him to look for internal growth right so we can use that pain as as a growth opportunity but again it only works for so long because most of the guys are like, okay, cool, I got Jack, got a girl, and now I'm lazy again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, That's great. Well, David, this has been awesome. It's great hearing your story, hearing how you've pulled yourself up and how you're now doing that for others. It's really inspiring. Uh, where can folks find out more about you? And I'll have links to everything in the show notes as well. Yeah, so mainly on Instagram right now. I also have like my personal Facebook page. It's all linked on my Instagram. But that's just where everyone seems to, to flock to. Um, it's at David Fishchuck on Instagram. Shoot me a DM, um, inquire for some coaching because my program entails fitness, mindset, and nutrition, wherein I build you a macro, I build you a diet based on macros for each individual. So male, female, depending on like your height, build, um, age, where I set you up with your own set of macros to make you lose weight. And then I have protocols to make you maintain, get out of that, or build a lot of muscle at the same time. Also, because it's online coaching, I'm able to coach you from around the world. And you don't need a gym. You can do it all from home. I'm very flexible with that. But a big portion of it is the mindset because anyone can go and Google a, a workout or go on YouTube and find a workout. But unless you can adhere to the diet, you can adhere to yourself and set those goals up and actually have a purpose in life, it's going to be impossible for you to not only change your body, but change your life around you. Because a man who can't actually be disciplined himself, he'll have a hard time in life. I have a hard time with his vices. Guys who I have a few guys in my program had issues with drinking alcohol. After joining the program, they don't have any issues with alcohol anymore because I tell them, 
Your past doesn't define you. Stop paying attention to it. Don't get drawn to the problem that you have in life. Get drawn on the person that you want to be. Forget about that. Don't think about it. Focus on your development and helping others and change moving forward. Don't, don't keep going back. There's nothing back there. And that's what I provide. I help change people's lives, bodies, and teach them how to eat the right way at the same time. <laughs> that's awesome. Great. Well, David, I can tell you're super passionate about helping people. And that's why I'm so happy to have you on. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Carnivore Cast. If you enjoyed this episode, please review on iTunes. It really helps us out and share it with a friend. What questions would you like answered or who would you like to hear from in the carnivore research community? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at carnivorecast or go to carnivorecast.com. You can also email me at info at carnivorecast.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep it carnivore.